Hello and welcome to another update. In this one, I'll be covering the latest developments throughout the front line. Starting out in the Robotina area, here it was confirmed by Syriac Maps that the Ukrainians have control over the village. He leaves the southern parts to western parts and the eastern parts as a gray zone as the Russians have withdrawn from the areas and they have reportedly gone to the rear defensive line of Robotina. So a lot of comments I received from a previous video were Western trolls, pro-Ukrainian trolls saying, I thought Russia counterattacked. Why does Ukraine have full control of the village now? That is because the Russian counterattack was not a counterattack to hold on to the village. According to Syriac Maps, it was the 7th Air Assault Division that was sent to relieve the Russian forces defending the village and help them uh, retreat out of the village. Similar to the Russian withdrawal from Liman uh, when the Ukrainians captured that uh, city. So the Russians here sent reinforcements and made a counterattack not to recapture the village but to withdraw from the village which is why we see the Ukrainians take control over it because the Russians withdrew from it. The latest news from the Robotina area is after the Ukrainian capture of it they have started gathering their units in the village and in the general area here surrounding Robotine. And this is most likely, as I've mentioned multiple times, as soon as the Ukrainians manage to capture the village of Robotine, they will start assaulting the main line of defense of the Russian forces. So the reason for this is because I've mentioned multiple times, the Robotina area is a position of which the Russians holding their position would be able to attack the Ukrainians if they ever wanted to push in the direction of Verbova. Also, pushing all of their troops in the direction of Verbova would allow the Russian forces to just concentrate their fire in one place and allow them to inflict heavy casualties on the Ukrainians. However, now they are able to attack in multiple directions, don't have to focus all of their forces in one direction, and they're able to prevent the Russians from attacking it directly with ADGMs and so on, as they now have control over Robotene. So with this, they don't have an excuse to not start their main push when it comes to this offensive. Meanwhile, we have gotten more reports of our Ukrainian armored vehicles being destroyed in this direction. In this picture here, we have a Ukrainian M2 Bradley sent by the United States hit by a anti-tank missile. Moving on, we move on to the Vermilsky ledge area where here fighting continues, but there's been no developments over the, since the last update. As for the Bakhmut area, the same here, the Ukrainian forces continue their attacks in the direction of Andrivka and Klishivka, but they are not seeing any developments here either. As for the Kremina area, heavy fighting is ongoing by the Dubrova area and the Serebrenka forest area. And then finally, in the Kharkiv Luhansk border, we see fighting continuing by the Silmahivka area, Kutlyarivka area, Kislivka area and Tsinkivka and Petropavlivka areas. So all of these areas have constant fighting, but there's been no developments since my last update, as both sides continue to fight heavily in these directions, but neither side is getting a big enough advantage to actually advance in the areas of the front. Then we move on to a topic that I thought was very interesting, because I read a comment on a History Legends video and I just had to bring up this topic. And the topic is the Ukrainian strategy throughout this war. So when the Russians first started their invasion on the 24th of February, they invaded from three directions, as is well known. They invaded in the direction of Kiev, from Crimea towards Kherson, and in the direction of Mariupol, as well as generally across the Donbass front. So the initial Ukrainian response was to initiate guerrilla warfare as it didn't have a proper front line. They were sending Ukrainian troops across the forest lines here to the north trying to ambush the Russian forces as well as in the Sumy direction where the Russians were also advancing towards Kiev from this direction. They attacked from the north towards Chernihiv and through Chernobyl in the northwest of the city. And so generally the Ukrainian forces tried establishing guerrilla warfare positions. And this is actually something that was a defensive tactic that the Ukrainians continued to use throughout the war. We saw them doing it in the direction of Mykolaiv when the Russians captured Kherson. We saw them do it in the direction of Izium while the Russians were holding on to it. So the Ukrainian forces were constantly using guerrilla warfare tactics. Now, what is interesting is that ever since the Battle of Bakhmut really began, when the Russian forces, Wagner forces, started storming the city of Soledar and Bakhmut itself here in the eastern part, 
the Ukrainians were here heavily not using guerrilla tactics, but instead just sending to the front and facing the Russian forces head on, trying to prevent advances. And this has been the shift of the Ukrainian strategy. Now that they've received a lot more Western weaponry, they stopped going for guerrilla tactics and started using this uh, head-on warfare tactics. And this is most likely from uh, Western influence, NATO influence, telling them, now that you have weapons, start fighting like a normal battle head-to-head, face-to-face battles. So this is a very confusing thing. But according to this comment, he is a Vietnamese guy. He talked from a a Vietnamese perspective from the Vietnam War. He was from the North Vietnam, so they were fighting against the United States and South Vietnam, and he essentially said that the Vietnamese were constantly using guerrilla warfare tactics. Even though, although the country is mainly jungle, the United States, whenever they were building a base or setting up positions, they would essentially burn out all of the jungles around them so that there was a large open field in between the base and whichever positions the Vietnamese could take so that whenever the Vietnamese had wanted to fight them head on they would have to go through open fields so the strategy or the situation or the territory terrain and so on itself has not changed because this is open fields that was open fields although it was jungle biomes they were fighting in open fields so how did the Vietnamese successfully do guerrilla tactics simulate to the way the Ukrainians did it at the start of the war? They would set up positions, ambushes, small squads, and consistently do these tactics where they ambush Russian forces and so on. However, it worked so well because the Russians were overstretching and they were launching armored convoys and they were on the offensive. Since essentially June or July last year, the Russians haven't properly been on the offensive. There have been minor offensives here and there, but there's been no major Russian offensive since then. Meanwhile, we see the Battle of Bakhmut. That was the biggest battle where the Russians were on the offensive, although it was Wagner. So here we see mainly an infantry force doing a slow push. And the Ukrainians here were just letting them push into their positions. So essentially what we were seeing in Bakhmut was that the Ukrainians would set up positions uh, in the eastern parts of the city and the Russians or Wagner forces would just storm at them head on and the Ukrainians would take the fight head on. So the fighting was head on against head on. They were fighting face to face. And this is a terrible strategy because the guerrilla warfare worked very well for Ukraine, yet for some reason they started doing these face-to-face tactics. And that is not a thing you do when you have a significant firepower disadvantage. So this is one major mistake the Ukrainians did, which has cost them a lot in this war, and that is not continuing their guerrilla warfare tactics. What they should have done in the Battle of Bakhmut is not to... Uh, continue this slow, slow push over the village of Bakhmut, the city of Bakhmut. They should have done what they did near the end, where they withdrew from some parts of the city and then they booby trapped them and then they shot artillery at the Wagner forces. So the Wagner forces would advance into these booby trapped buildings, the buildings would collapse, they would blow up, and they would be under constant artillery fire. That is the strategy that they should have used from the start. Instead, they sent the troops to the front to face the Wagner soldiers face to face. And this is when they took the most casualties. And they have been doing this, especially when they are on the offensive. They're doing these head-on fights. But in reality, there's no reason for them to be on the offensive. The reality of the situation is that the Ukrainians want to go on the offensive the reasons being that they want to retake their own country. They want to recapture the territories held by Russia, the ones colored in red. And the reason for this is because they believe if they manage to kick out the Russians, then they win the war. And while that in essence will very likely be true, if they manage to completely kick out Russia from Ukraine, they will most likely have won the war. Russia would most likely accept such a defeat. However, if we look at it historically, the multiple invasions of Afghanistan, the multiple times in history where a major country has invaded a smaller country. The only times where the smaller country wins is when they initiate a guerrilla warfare and they never go on the offensive. They never 
go on the offensive. The only times to go on the offensive is when the major power is either completely retreating out of the country or that they are very exhausted from a very long time of fighting. What we saw is that the United States took heavy casualties in Vietnam. The United States didn't take that many casualties in Afghanistan, but they used up a lot of time. They spent 20 years on the war and they ended up losing the country in a matter of months as soon as they retreated out of the country. So the Ukrainian strategy shouldn't be to look at this, how can I end this war as fast as possible? But it should instead be, how can we avoid as much casualties as possible? How can we preserve as much as possible? If the Ukrainians had today most of what the West had sent them, then they would be able to launch a successful offensive. Instead, they have been attreated throughout the whole front from the start of the war until today, because as soon as the Russians stop being on the offensive, they start their own. They went with the Kherson offensive, they went with the Kharkiv offensives. The thing is, they had major success in Kherson and Kharkiv. They captured the areas. However, the big issue here is that as soon as they captured these two areas, their military capabilities were drained. They didn't have the ability to then attack in the Zaporizhia direction. Instead, the Russians were allowed to build these fortifications for a very long time. Then the Ukrainians blamed the West for sending weapons too slowly, but instead they should have blamed themselves for allowing the Russians to just attrit their own forces, because in the scenario that played out in reality, looking back at what happened throughout the war, the Russians were constantly launching artillery shells on Ukrainian positions, and the Ukrainians were just taking it because they went to the front line to attack the Russian forces, they went to the front line to protect the villages at the front. What they should have done instead is create a buffer zone outside the range of Russian artillery. If the Russians decide to advance, they would be hit by minefields, they would be hit by fortifications, they would be hit by booby traps, and the Ukrainians would just hit their uh, positions as soon as they advance because they would enter Ukrainian artillery range. And what the Ukrainians keep bragging about is the accuracy of Western artillery. Well then, with increased accuracy and increased range, why don't you make use of it instead of going to the front to let your soldiers to? That is the situation. That is the reality of the situation. And this is why Ukraine is going to lose this war as long as they continue with their current strategy, because it is a strategy that loses men and gains territory for in the end to lose the war. And that is all for this update. Thank you all for watching and have a great day.